Hi, I'm Katharina Michio, and I want to welcome you all to the Venus Italian International Film Festival with um, my new online magazine as well, which is um, the Indie Film Online Magazine, IndieFilmOnline.com. And I'm very excited to start this magazine for filmmakers and um, to help them promote their work. And with us today, we're going to have Deborah Markowitz and um, John Marine. We have Diana Durango, and who plays Jem, and Jim Prevalsalis, who plays Jim. Let's bring them on. Hi, Deborah. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? Okay, I think Jimmy and Diana are in the yes. waiting room also. Yes. Um, we have Deborah Markowitz, who is the producer, writer, director of the film, yes. So we have uh, Gem and the Photo Op. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I love this film. It's, um, I hear that John, it was John's original concept. Yeah, um, John. Um, coming on or? <laughs> hey, John, you're coming in. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, I want to know if this is something that you really think of, that people are hiding cameras around the house. <laughs> yeah, he, he just had this idea and um, he was telling me about it and it started getting a little bigger and a little bigger. And so I wrote it out for him and, um, you know, Diana's an, a friend, she was in my third movie, and we said, you know, I asked if she was interested, and she came in, and uh, uh, Jimmy Pravacillis, who I know is, is trying to get in. Yeah, I saw his name there. I was just about to hit it, and then it disappeared. So hopefully he'll, he'll be back. <laughs> you want to come in? It was your idea, so you should be on this. He's high. He's being shy. I think, no, yeah. don't be shy. We don't bite, John. <laughs> He wouldn't mind. <laughs> okay. Oh, if we bit? There he is. <laughs> yeah, so it was his idea. Hi. And um, we see you today. You're in the light. <laughs> I can fix that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. But it was fun. It was, um, I mean, if you think about it, really, we oh, had no did. privacy anymore. You know, everything that we do. Exactly. and. Uh, so this is kind of just what happens if it goes a little bit awry. A little bit awry um, with an influencer as well, right? Oh, look at him. Hi, Jim. Hi, partner. Cowboy. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Ha, howdy, howdy. I said buongiorno. Don't you speak Italian, girl? Uh oh, buongiorno. <laughs> and I'm saying howdy to you <laughs> with, the, with the cowboy hat. Fordham does. I All dress right. up. I don't put pants on though. Let's no pants. Who's, who's the pretty? All right. Well, we'll just imagine. <laughs> so, John, I want to know, like, what what was going on? How did you come up with this idea for this film? Well, I have a rather disturbed mind. Okay. Um, <laughs> I. Oh, dear. Um, I was paying attention to social media, to Facebook and so on and so forth. And people don't understand the fact that anything that ever goes online is there forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It never goes away, even if you erase it. It's stuck somewhere. And there were various posts that Debbie commented on the fact that somebody wrote something on her page and she has no idea who it is. <laughs> Not one of her friends, it's a friend of a friend of a so on. And she has no idea who this person is who suddenly came in and derailed things. 
mm. and oh, made God. comments about so on and so forth and she had to block them and I'm thinking and and, and you're lucky that you caught that yeah and and, and seeing people there and you don't even know it yeah but yeah. you see people who are on camera and they don't get it or they've turned the camera on and they shouldn't have um uh, then there's the whole thing about the cameras on your computer on the monitors. If you're not paying attention, you don't know if they're on or not. Things like that. Yeah. And I taught Cisco, you know, security, uh, internet systems, A plus computer repair, and all the rest of that stuff. Okay. Um, so I actually cool. understand how computers and the internet actually works, including things that people aren't supposed to know about, you know, deep web stuff and all kinds of things. So Jimmy knows about all that. Yeah. Well, Jimmy's a special <laughs> case. Um, the tape and, that goes over my little dot on top. Uh -huh. Just in case. And I remember specifically when we when I was taking Cisco training, they invited us down to one of the ISPs, the internet service providers. And as we're walking through one of the control rooms, the guy says, oh, you want to listen to phone calls? He hits a button. You started hearing phone calls. You could hear the phone calls. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. All right, that's scary. Because <laughs> after 9-11, they're actually, the NSA is required by law to track all electronic communications. Oh. They don't listen to it. Computers listen to it. They're listening for code words. So if you start to go on, if you go online and you start to research bomb making materials, oh. you'll probably come to someone's you notice. Just, you just ruined the show, John. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just telling you where this all came from. But it, it suddenly, <laughs> I it remembered the fact that everybody is being watched all the time, whether you know it or not. You're being tracked by your phone, so on, so on. And uh, this just kind of great. suddenly gelled one day as to what happens if you're not paying attention, you just move into a new place and there are cameras. Mm. Yeah. I mean, this is much lighter. It doesn't go into all it's the depth of it, but well, you know, yeah. that's how his brain it's, works. No, my original it's, thought it's, was a lot darker than what I we like the lists at the end. Um, Jim, how are you? Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, I have a shower. Jim, <laughs> James Prattis Did I say Correctly. About infringement on my privacy. Am How? I? Yes. Don't say any of those code words. Okay, listen, I'm talking over here. Pay attention. I got important <laughs> things. Um, <clears throat> How much does the NSA actually watch? And should I be covering my camera? And am I now a porn star? <laughs> um, that all depends. <laughs> a porn star? Um, <laughs> Depends how agile you are. <laughs> no, all, all electronic Were you alone or with someone? Is being tracked. <laughs> I'm alone. Okay. Three how are we all faring in this, um, in <laughs> this pandemic time? I haven't noticed. Oh, no, no, it's weird. You know, we sit at the computer and write and do the, all these things, right? <laughs> you look like the guy next to the, you know, the, the uh, governor. <laughs> right. Watch Charlie Chaplin film. <laughs> Chaplin was Hold up signs. I'll have Hold I'll have the, the the subtitles on the bottom. Um, <laughs> For the interview. Yes. <laughs> They'll be a little bit off. Jim, I wanted to ask you: um, Was it easy to play this character? Yes. Uh, yeah. And I also heard that um, there was a little bit of improv going on on it, too. Is that true? Much to Debbie's chagrin. <laughs> 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 yeah, we improv. Debbie was really cool, and she's really, like, open. Diana, tap once for yes, twice for no. <laughs> she really have no um, audio? There's no audio? Give me your pants. No. <laughs> What? Yeah. Dated? What? Should we roll with it? How about if we play the trailer? Oh. Okay. And then once, um, then Diana, I'll go. <laughs> okay. Let's play the trailer of Jim and the photo op. Jim? Yeah? I think that there's a camera somewhere in the house. God, you're here. There is. 
There's a camp upstairs and I got Oh, good, this here. again. Okay, okay stop, enough. Listen, upstairs. what's the matter, what's the matter? You're not getting enough attention? It was right there. I, I, I saw it. I, I saw it. I saw it, Jim. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of improv. Um, Diana was great to work with in that respect. She she responded very well. She was in the moment. Deb's awesome. She lets like she wants that. I think. I don't know if she didn't. She didn't say anything. Did yeah, you and good. Diana know each other before? We had a phone reading. Oh, okay. And that was about it. I met Diana shortly at the Long Island International Film Festival before we filmed. Uh, she yelled at me that's our relationship now and that was our that was our intimacy and then we just hit yeah, right in the but that you know that's that's, that's perfect. so you played off that yeah that's that's normal this day and age when everyone's yeah. making films so a lot of times you just you do one reading maybe if a, if a rehearsal and you're filming you know it's a luxury to rehearse these days i, I like the, the the contrast of the of the two characters you know, she was more of like the submissive and you were more of um, the a-hole. Go ahead, say the, I, I was going to say that, but you said it first. I know. I make it easier for you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm here to help. Is that why it was so easy for you to plow? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Certain things just... just the character come. was inspired by Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> you started it, Jim. <laughs> Um, so is there anything that you came away with, with this part? Um, I'm a much kinder, gentler person. I've, I've, uh, realized the error of my ways. I'm now a Buddhist monk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good. And yeah. you won't be doing, you know, you won't be mean to your future wives. I'm very mean to people. As you said, I don't eat any animal products, and I praise Buddha. Turns out Buddha, uh, uh, Buddha is our yeah, asshole too, so it's not great. So Jim, what do you have go, uh, coming on? What do you have com uh, coming up? Besides nope. this? No I get, I'm gonna take a shower tomorrow. Okay. Um, <laughs> almost good. Can oh. you yes. can hear you. Hear you. Oh. Do you, you're gorgeous. Do you. <laughs> You. My brother goes, don't make fun of de deaf people. I'm like, I'm not. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, we're glad that you're here. And um, so you play Jem in, in this film. And um, the submissive um, wife of, uh, of Jim, who plays yeah. Jim. And... Um, it was a it was a very interesting part. Kind of saw yourself a little bit in it. There, and I'm not going to lie to you. I'll be very vulnerable in the past, and also now. You know, like we're so addicted to social media. You know, it's become a part of us. Especially looking at COVID right now, it's a way that we cope. It's a way that people think that that's our reality, and it's not. And people are like, "Oh, you're so glamorous," and I'm like, "Really? Please, no." So yeah, yeah, it's it's weird. It's really weird. Sorry. It's it's a strange uh, time for sure. There have been moments where society and including myself, women get insecure. So we want to portray ourselves to be a certain way or, or do a certain thing or just say, look, everything's fine and everything's, you know, not fine. And we get addicted to that social media aspect of things. But then what happens if it consumes you? What if it happens if you put too much out there? What if somebody starts to look for what your door looks like or what your car looks like and they just push that limit a little too far right um and i think with with jimmy's character um he it was ruining his relationship with his wife he couldn't get through unless he was on the other side of a screen so that's another another thing that's uh, that is occurring out there but yeah it's uh social media is a means i must say that in the past i've used to uh, uses a self-defense mechanism um, and it's something that people do and it's scary. It's really, really scary. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, I agree because um, what I want to say on the back of that is that um, 
this amenity of it where all of a sudden I call it keyboard balls. Everybody can get like the things you would never say to someone's face in, in public. Now all of a sudden you see people, and that's, I, I'm a five-year-old. I just started building an electric slot car race set in my, my bedroom because I had to do something other than staying on Facebook all day because I was getting into stupid argument. I actually had an argument with some idiot about which um, generation ate the Tide Pods. <laughs> and it wasn't the get yourself an education. That's your level. <laughs> there a slap emoji. <laughs> they have the hug one now, right? It's like, oh, I love you. Yeah. Now we need a, a slap. <laughs> a slap. <laughs> Push. Thing. Yeah. Uh, this is what I want to say. Tertiary information is being sold as primary fact. People don't understand that the first part of information, your first part of experience is, do I experience this? Is it happening to me? Secondary is, is it happening to someone I can physically talk to or know? And then tertiary comes from, you know, third party, uh, like the media and stuff like that. And it's been flipped over where people are being taught to believe that what they read on a screen is absolute fact. I had an argument with someone saying, oh, it, it, COVID, for instance, it lasts up to six hours in the air. I said, did you have a science class? Solids, liquids, and gases. If it's on a piece of, like, you know, a tiny bit of uh, um, liquid, like it's on air droplets, it can't, it's not aerosol, it's not lighter than air. But the fact that they read it somewhere or they heard it somewhere, that they are now considering the law. And so I think all bets are off in terms of people's um, belief systems and, and intelligence. It's kind of like the, it's like the wild west of information. And what Debbie wrote and John uh, created is that kind of thing, the ultimate fear factor of like what it, the whole, an anonymous, innocuous um, entity controlling you. And this, we did in a microcosm in this short film, but it's really all of us. It's all of us. You know, as much as you hate Facebook, you're on it. As much as I'd love to slap Zuckerberg right across the teeth, the guy's got me. I mean, I, I can't, I want to get off Facebook, but then I'm like, mm, I got friends on there, you know? It, it's so, I think that's what this, this film is a microcosm of that. I just had a recent experience um, where I broke up with somebody, but his stepmother, she, we, we had run a break or whatever, and the stepmother just started going onto my Facebook and started liking everything and commenting on everything. And then, I just wouldn't comment. And she sent me a text message saying, I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> and then I took her off yeah, of yeah. Facebook because that's cyber stalking. And I'm just like, she goes, but I don't understand why you're not, why you don't want me on Facebook. I'm like, that's creepy. Yeah, and that's not creepy. my life. <laughs> I'm like, I'm watching me. What are you doing? Right. And I think <laughs> Right, and I think also like as actors, directors, people in the entertainment business, you know, social media also is a part of our of our business because that's how you know that's this transmedia production. So like, we actually have a life outside of this. Things are not glamorous. I like to wear overalls and not put makeup on, right? But on social media, we have to to use that, and it's not our life. And cyber stalking, by the way, is very real and it's scary as hell. It's really scary. So yeah. That's what the blocking is about, right? We have to block. No, I can't stop. Stop the <laughs> stop crazy. emoji and block. <laughs> Swear and block. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, what, do you have anything else coming up? Uh, are you working on um, a, a, any other projects that we should know about? Deb. Yeah. Deb. Oh, me? Ooh. Okay, I know you were talking to. No, I was talking well, to Diane. I'm currently I know. Is in it post. Are you guys are working on together? Well, I, I have a, a couple of more films that are going around the festival circuit. There's Gem in the Photo Op, um, Confidant, which you're screening also just started. Uh, we have a film called Living Like Kings, which I directed, which is uh, written by Ethne Labriola, which actually stars John. John's the, the lead in it, which is amazing. Oh, so what is it called? Yeah, he plays two people in it. But anyway, um, so that was pretty it awesome. Again, say the name. Uh, called Living Like Kings, but they, right now it's okay. being uh, going through the final scoring. And then I have a feature called The Only Woman in the World, which 
just went into post sound as well as scoring and then my series a couple of guys which just went into it's been scored it's being scored now and also going into post sound so oh yeah i want to have everything done by the time the pandemic was over but not everything there'll still be two films i'm working on <laughs> really like how many did you just name off you know <laughs> is he kidding <laughs> I mean, I really, it's, it's a good Wait, thing I didn't do any more films. Three half months, I think, and you just <laughs> made, like, a ridiculous amount of films. It usually takes people a lot longer than that, Deb. You just whip out films like it's, like, it's unbelievable. It's a busy year. You are a force to be reckoned with, for sure. And it's not only just films, though. Like, her films are actually really good. Some of these things, you're like, oh, that's cute. But her stuff actually, it has a lot of substance. A lot of substance. Oh, like, wow. And her writing ability is just exquisite. So I just. And all very different. Yeah, exactly. It's not the same story over. It's not a Palm Palmer film. You know, it's just, it's dynamic. The stuff that goes through her head and the way she's able to express it, it's phenomenal. Debbie, do you get into your character's minds first and then that's how you do the dialogue? Is that what yeah. you do? I sort of become all the characters, and as I'm writing it, I kind of am reading it to myself. And it's very disturbing <laughs> from the next room. <laughs> she hears me talk to myself, fighting with myself. And I look around the corner and go, laughing, crying. There's plenty going on there, but that's good. <laughs> and I want to say that I've, I've seen um, a couple of guys, uh, some stuff that uh, De Debbie runs by. Me, we, me and Debbie are good friends, and we run by each other's stuff. And uh, it's great. A couple of guys is really, I think. I'm it's, it's really a, looking yeah, forward to seeing that because I love Lucas. He was my uh, co-host at the at the last Cutting Room Film Festival, and that was a lot of fun. And he's a, an amazing actor. I was in uh, I Know This Much Is True, the scene with Mark Ruff. Uh, let's see what else I've done. Uh, December, I shot opposite Sasha Baron Cohen in uh, Trial of the Chicago Seven. Got a short thing with him. I was on Ray Donovan. I had a good little scene with uh, in there. I saw that. My new is starting to hit the circuit. It's uh, Big Grand Souls. And uh, that just got into the Long Island International Film Festival. Deb, have you ever heard of that one? Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Expo. You should have got your notice today. <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> yes. And actually, have Jeff runs the Long Island um, um, International Film Festival. And this is another reason why I'm doing this magazine, um, so that I could get all of our film, everybody's film festival out there and all actors and filmmakers. I want to help promote everybody. So the Indie Film Online f uh, magazine now is going to be an outlet for that. So I want you all to have interviews on that. Thank so. you. And so we reached out to some actors and this guy, Stephen, uh, Baldaria, I forgot his name. I should know his name. He's a great writer, and so he wrote this great little pilot. And God willing, when all this is over, we'll shoot it and see what happens. That's yeah, we all have some things on hold right now, right? But I don't know. Has it's anybody been... heard anything about SAG? If uh, we're opening soon to October now, it's they've been moving the goalpost. I've talked to my agent, yeah. and you know, there's always this a lot of optimism, but you know, optimism also needs some. Um, I don't know, something solid. It needs a, like a real grounding. It needs a, a point of reference. And for a while back, they said September. Mm -hmm. And I was reading, and actually Deb shared an article with me about how when these productions come back, they're going to downsize a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of co-stars, and I was heading towards guest stars just before all this. And uh, sadly, like, you know, they're going to cut out things like a lot of, like when I did the Deuce, right? It was a 200-person scene. They won't do that right away. So that would, if, 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 that was, if I was up for that, that scene would probably be cut and I'd probably lose a gig. I know that they're um, like emailing people in pre-production and yeah. trying to get um, a feel of that. Um, so is that only for New York? So with, with Florida, the way that we're opening up is very, I mean, it's very quick. It's really weird. And thankfully, there aren't a lot of people getting COVID around here, but they're shooting movies now, like features in Orlando. I just um, got cast for one called Snow Gals with Rose Rosen. And, you know, 
they're starting to bring stuff here. And I was wondering if, if that's, I, I, this is news to me, that that's not what's happening up there. You guys aren't really producing. I mean, it, it, it could be, but um, a lot of people are con contractually um, slated to be up here. Like uh, the Gilded Age is up here for five years. They've been here for about six months. Unfortunately, once they started building, right. uh, this happened. So the set's just sitting there, but they're, they're gonna be here for five years and uh, Dickinson, will likely come back for the third season. It shot one and two out by me, and uh, they were gonna be off for a year anyway because of one of the lead schedules. Mm -hmm. um, people, I mean, I'm already getting requests from people who do want to film, but we get, we're only in phase one. So yeah. we, we, I think it's phase three to begin filming. We're hoping by September. We so have we a lot of don't really know yet. And I put off all, I mean, luckily I didn't have anything scheduled right then, but we were supposed to do another, we wanted to see episode of a couple of guys who were on the third episode. And uh, I had a short film uh, called Just Look Into My Eyes um, um, that uh, John is gonna be shooting, starring Lucas and Abigail Hawk. And um, I'm just gonna put that on hold now for quite a while. Cause that's like a sexy film. You can't be six feet apart. So we'll see what happens with that. No. What are people are there are a lot of friends of mine that they have like big condos in, in Manhattan and they said that a lot of people are just like leaving their their furniture in Manhattan and they're just coming either down to here. Where are you? Florida. I'm in Tampa. So come on down child. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there are a lot of people just moving here and some people are saying that New York's not going to be the same for like 10 years. So what do you think that's going to do to like the entertainment business and and all of that. Is it going to make it easier for unknown actors to work in New York? Um, is it going to make it harder? Will Hollywood move again to Florida or Georgia? Like what's, what's going well, on? I, I think that um, you might find some films are going to go to Florida, but it's sometimes hard to confuse or, or to replicate uh, New York in Florida. Um, it, I'm to we're going to open slowly. <laughs> we're going to open slowly. They're going to rewrite a bunch of scenes. Um, It'll happen, you know, it'll happen, uh, you know, the, everybody's already sending out feelers. So what do you think? What if, can, can we say this in manufacturing and then start in phase one? It's like, no, you can't. <laughs> nah, they've already designated it is not a, a phase one activity. It's going to come back, but it's going to be slowly. We're going to have to be cautious. Um, you know, I just took uh, some uh, con uh, contact tracing course because it helps you also with knowing all the safety of what all the protocol is going to be. Um, eh, I'm not going to do that, but I wanted to know what, what, um, you didn't have a choice. Yeah, well, I didn't have a choice either. Does it, affect, but, um, does it affect like makeup? Does it affect craft services? Of course it is. Yeah. Will it, yeah. Will it affect like acting classes? Like, like at the actor studio, you have to touch people. I mean, it's going to affect how we, mm -hmm. how we, everything, do, right? So what's going to happen? Everything. Do we, do we have to bring our own food? I was saying, <clears throat> well, no, but the, the food will, I mean, if it's really low budget, somebody can ask you to, but the food has to be prepackaged. Like you can't have just a craft table and, right. and it'll have to be staggered. Um, the time when people eat, there's a good chance you'll come on set and people will give, you know, have to take your temperature. In fact, we just got a uh, non-contact thermometer. They will ask you to do that before you leave your house. Um, we also will, what they did in Australia is they actually wear armbands and depending on the color, only those people can go near the camera. So people are going to have to probably maybe do without a focus puller, you know, and get an automatic, uh, you know, you just got something, an automatic focus pull. Um, so same thing is we can do it because I'm already used to working with very small sets. Right. Um, and, and I work with people I know, so we know how to be responsible, but you still have to be careful, you know. So it's, it's, uh, it, it's going to work itself out. Um, the thing is, we, we have to get back to reality, but we have to do it slowly so that we just don't just totally blow everything up and, and lose three million people. You know, it's just, uh, it's gotta happen, you know. It's just taking our time for it to happen. But yeah, there's probably people filming in Florida right now, but I doubt a lot of them came from New York. Um, it's just what happens. It's crazy. Well, you guys can all come over here. We'll have a fun show. Sounds, Sounds good. Back in my bag. <laughs> 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 um, well, time is running out, guys, and um, I want to thank you all and wish you all luck in the Venus in, uh, Italian International Film Festival. And Deb, we know that you are Italian, so <laughs> yes. <laughs>
<laughs> um, even though the film isn't, but, um, but you are. And um, so I wanna thank you all for, for being a part of this. If there's anything else you wanna add, if you want to promote something that you're doing or, or we're all good. <laughs> Astro of the skies, fortunately. <laughs> there you go. See? Who is that? Someone oh. who came on. All right, too late. <laughs> we're ending. All right, well, thank you all. Thank I you. really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, guys. Take Love care. You guys. I'll see you, yeah. I'll see you um, for Q&A after uh after the show okay yeah, the festival we'll see you then god bless you guys bye, bye, -bye. hugs and kisses